Issue 268. We start out with Supersonic face off against Knuckles, who apologizes for hitting him, which is out of character for him when he thinks even the normal Sonic is evil. Sonic says that Dexter's control collar device works perfectly, and Silver smacks Sonic into the ground and gives Omni the control collar to get his basic systems running. The Chaotix jump out of his screen, and Sonic attacks SVO Mighty, calling themselves idiots to the end, and Tails tells Silver he should keep Sonic busy while he gets set up. Holly gets a cover off, Silver gives Knuckles a boost, letting him fly into Sonic, and surprisingly, Omni asks Tails what he's thinking sending Sonic to the Void of the Special Zone, being opposed to having him killed even at this point. Tails says humbly that for once he knows what he's doing. He makes a reference to target practice, fortunately justifying why he's able to accurately hit the star post with a crossbow, and he tells everyone to hold Sonic steady. Sonic calls Tails a pixel brain, setting everyone a bit away from him with his power, and Tails says he was distracted enough for the real plan, and tells Porker to do his thing. Why didn't he do it immediately instead of wasting time telling Sonic he was distracted? At that time, Sonic could have obliterated them all. Sonic snarks, what, is this your big plan? Attack me with the floating island? Sonic gets his hands on the Chaos Emeralds in the chamber, and then he realizes that these aren't the Chaos Emeralds. To call briefly says, now who's the idiot? Porker then does something to drain the super out of Sonic. Tails says that Porker said the floating island's emergency ejection system jettisons all Chaos energy within the Emerald Chamber. And there's no telling where a Mobius Sonic will end up but he at least got a chance to get to safety before the authorities would find him. The story ends with him seeming to be on the moon. So I guess the moon has oxygen on it, or Mobius has an extended atmosphere, because otherwise I have to wonder how he's not suffocating right now. As far as I know, none of the Chaos Emeralds have ever been sent to the moon before. It would have made more sense if he had gone to the moon willingly to get off Mobius. So does this mean that Silver is from a separate timeline entirely, one created by a hypersonic? But Silver going back in time made it so that his timeline never existed, meaning he would have never been sent back in time to help fight Hypersonic. If Sonic was never destined to create Silver's future at all, how did it even get created? Time travel sucks. Silver really should have just been from an alternate dimension only think that he went back in time. Meanwhile, in Flame Core, we see Amy, who had received an emergency signal from Techno. She hopes she's okay, falls down a cliff from the ground breaking below her, and sees Techno covered in mud, in a callback to when she found Short Fuse in mud. Then Techno breaks free of the mud in an awful looking cybernic suit. Seriously, I don't know why they can't just have her cybernic suit look exactly the same as her normal self except metal. It worked for Uncle Chuck! Black and red eyes aside. Well, he didn't always have that though. Suddenly, Tecmo tries to shoot at Amy with a laser out of nowhere, and starts talking as if she's not brainwashed or anything, and has always been evil. I guess she snapped from what she did to set. She even reveals that she told KBC News about Amy's secret pink hair origin, proving that it's supposed to be canon. Amy wonders what the beeping sound is as she gets close to some crystals, and when the crystals are shattered, Amy realizes that the beeping is actually Morse code from Techno, which she taught Amy beforehand off-screen conveniently. Techno says that she's fighting it, and needs Amy to cause a power surge, and says that she's opened a port in the back of the neck, because she can do that apparently. Amy's creative by ricocheting an arrow so that it eventually hits the neck, and Techno regains control of her cybernic armor, only to reveal that she's been trapped in it just like Shorty was. This, this is so arbitrary, I don't know what was, I don't know what was going through their heads thinking this was an appealing idea. Although, again, I mainly hate this because she looks horrible. Why can't she just look like a right girl herself except metallic? Instead, she doesn't even look like she has eyes! Techno says she's done terrible things, and she wants to find Shorty alone and make things right somehow. At least Amy lampshades her leaving her again so soon. In the next story, on the lonely roads near Oil Desert, Tails says that someone's been sabotaging Eggman's forces out here, and Tails is hoping it's Sonic, and compassionately says he'd never admit it but I'm sure he could use a friendly face after an ordeal like that. Fortunately, Holly doesn't insult him, and she points out some smoke in the distance. They find some freedom fighters who are honored to meet Tails. One of them is a gorilla chief mechanic, who says that once he fixes the transporter, he'll be meeting the brains over at the rendezvous. Their boss went ahead to raid a badnik factory, 
One repaired transport later, we see everyone going across the desert on vehicles, with Tails lampshading the gorilla yelling right next to him. And it makes sense that Tails is denying that Holly is his sidekick, since he used to be in that role and would refuse to put anyone else to that demeaning position. The gorilla says that his leader hates waiting around, causing Tails to be reminded of someone he knows. They go through a Batnik factory and get threatened by a bunch of robots. Now, after it's doubted that their boss even exists, he says, Ice is just fine, thanks. Throws a shield shaped like a classic Sonic pumper, sees his friends with explosions saying that he's the last person he should be doing orders since he was never good at following them at all. And it turns out their boss is short views. In the next story, Tales of the Metropolis is keeping watch on a press conference announcing the second series of Marines TV show. Wait, so is she an immigrant from the Soul Dimension? I guess so, and Tails does say that she popped up out of nowhere. She's, she's also been taking down Badniks a lot, so she's being useful awesome. Her show is about her being a Badnik hunter. See, Flynn? This is how you write Marine. And now watch as it's revealed that Marine was never actually a badass, and it was somehow somebody else doing the hero with him the whole time. Because video games! Fuck originality! Oh god, please don't let that be true. After Marine gets threatened and pushed away by a giant crocodile robot with Eggman talking through it, Tails comes to her rescue as he, oh for fuck's sake, Marine is a phony. It was all computer tricks to inspire the people. Well, so much for Marine being written in a refreshing new role. Well, she is a TV star inspiring people, but still, come on, why does she have to be an incompetent idiot all the time? That's the whole reason she's a terrible character. Not the fact that she's enthusiastic and adventurous like Sonic. This would have been a perfect opportunity to make her a good character. And they halfway succeeded because, oh, g god forbid she's competent. This is what being too loyal to the games gets you. Marine's put in a tree, and she's impressed that Tails isn't mad at her. And when Tails gets bitten, Marine smacks the robot with a boulder. This better make her a badass for real from now on. No, of course not. Instead, Tails is gonna assist her on her show from now on, because she's completely worthless without him. The first story was by Steven Davis, and it's about Supersonic being drained of his power and ejected away by the Chaos Chamber, causing him to be stranded on the moon of all things. I really would hate to be Sonic right now. I admire his determination and stubbornness and not just giving up on life after everyone's been irrevocably turned against them. How would he possibly know that he could reverse this? That's inspiring, and also very foolish. He should have known better than to return to Mobius. How could he possibly know that anything good would come from it other than sheer stubbornness? The second story is about Amy reuniting with Techno, who is inexplicably now trapped in cybernic armor that inexplicably had her brainwashed to try to kill Amy and turn her against her. It would have felt a lot better if we actually saw her being kidnapped and made a cybernic before this point. But since Techno's always been nice to her, Amy doesn't just buy that Techno's evil, like she did with Sonic. I wish they pointed the hypocrisy out. I mean, at least her being a cybernic makes the name Techno make actual sense, but why can't she just look the same way she did before? Such a dumb design. The third story is by Chris G, and as Tails discover a new group of freedom fighters led by Sharpfuse. It's inspiring to see that these guys used to be random relatable civilians and then got the guts to fight badniks. And I guess something about their designs is a lot better and they're not being obnoxiously forced on me coming on too strong as characters like the Ultimax Squad. Because I actually like these OCs. I guess a gorilla OC just feels less generic. And it's also good that Short Fuse went from not wanting to fight anymore to, to this role. And the final story is by LT Fluxure, and has the predictable twist that Marine was only faking fighting bad Nick's on her TV show, and Tails has to save her. Though at least she gets to do one badass thing, but come on, it would've been so much better if there wasn't that twist there and she was actually a competent character for once. Why does she have to be a nuisance in every single continuity just because video games? The fact that I predicted that twist out of sheer cynicism says something about how good writing it supposedly is. <laughs>